All right, hey everybody, and welcome to another awesome Schoolism uh, drawing jam. This one is a character drawing jam. Be warned, not all <laughs> characters will be nice, but that's part of the fun, right? And uh, right. so I wanted to first let everybody know how this is going to work. Currently, we have our first uh, uh, muse, victim, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> Billy Eilish and so you yourself can be butchered by this wonderful amazing talented group of super sensational uh, artists if you hashtag lightbox or LBX character and post a picture of yourself on Twitter or Instagram I will be searching them out and putting a putting one of you up there as all of these amazing artists uh, start to character you. Okay, so I'll give everybody a second <laughs> to post up their uh, fun photos here uh, as I let in um, one of our panelists. Let me bring in Mr. Steven Silver in here. Hey, Steven, you're muted. You could unmute yourself. Okay. All, All right. right. You made it. You made in. it. Oh, man. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Hi. Steven. Hello. 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 All right. So some uh, introductions, shall we? Uh, so first here on my list, I'll just I'll make sure I have a list because there's a bunch of y'all. I have <laughs> on the top of my list, I have Masei Seki. Masei is a yeah. character designer from Toronto. Uh, she has worked in live action and animation. Um, and she's brilliant. <laughs> she's awesome. Well, I happened. Now it... Next person awesome. up is uh, Dom uh, Domishi, also a former Torontonian, maybe. We're, I don't even know if you lived yes. in Toronto. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, I did. For over 20 years <laughs> amazing well you can't yeah. tell by the way she looks because that that make her two years old uh, she... <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> okay cool yes uh yes yeah, so uh domi is working at pixar a director of bow does many top secret things that we will be very careful <laughs> not to talk about all right next person is ricky ricky narvia he has Nerva. Done Nierva, I'm sorry. That was a <laughs> okay, test of my audio, and okay, it's working. Um, <laughs> yes. And so Ricky has worked on many of the beloved uh, Pixar films as well. And uh, currently, you're at. Oh, I'm. I started my own studio called Studio Epil, Amazing. and I'm helping out a short film for Blender in Amsterdam. Oh, you're working with Dirk, right? Yeah, that's right. Dirk's awesome. He is, yes. Cool. Yeah, it's really fun. Unfortunately, Dirk is not here, but you know who is here <laughs> is Jason uh, Siler. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, character Nosy, uh, Golden Nosy Award recipient, as well as um, Time Magazine cover artist, uh, Rolling Stone Magazine, the list goes on, probably charactered or did a portrait of Billie Eilish sometime in his life too, who knows. Hey, Jason. Hey, how's it going? What's this Pixar thing you keep talking about? Uh, it's some, uh, it's, they, they do films or something, I think. Uh, I'll have to check them out sometime. Yeah, they're new. Give them some time. You'll, you'll hear about them. Okay. <laughs> um, next person up here is Bright Aqua. Bright is coming to us all the way from Ghana. Hey, Bright. Wow. Welcome. Awesome. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And uh, next on my list here is Joe Pitt. Joe, I believe you work at Netflix currently, yeah? Yes, currently, yes. And uh, mainly yeah. character designer. I am, yes. Awesome. I'm on the, uh, yeah. On some top secret stuff that you probably shouldn't talk about. <laughs> okay, next one up here is um, Vouter Tulp. Vouter. Hi there. And you're joining us all the way from? From the Netherlands. Oh. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. So it must be what 10 p.m. over there. Yes, it is. Well, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Oh, Wouter absolutely. Has, uh, of course, Wouter is very well known for many things as well as characters, but he's also one of the biggest stats 
that just impressed the heck out of me is he's done over a hundred children's book illustrations, uh, illustrated books, and now he doesn't do them anymore. But he does other <laughs> stuff, uh, which we'll find more, find out more about. Uh, Elsa Chang, Elsa, you there? Hello. Hey, yes. Elsa. Uh, Elsa supplied us with this wonderful picture of Billie Eilish. Uh, I take it you're a fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Elsa, currently you work at uh, Disney, yeah? Yeah, Disney Television. Excellent, excellent. Oh. Who are we missing here? Ronnie Del Carmen. You cannot hide from me, Ronnie. I see you. I'm <laughs> out of here. I, I, I am uh, a facsimile of Ronnie Del Carmen. That's what I. And Ronnie was a co-director on Inside Out, as well as uh, involved in many, many other classics, uh, treasures of animation. Yes. Let's leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott Campbell. Scott. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Scott right. is very well known for his adorable renditions of all sorts of hilarious things um what do you tell people you do scott um i um mostly write and illustrate picture books but i also do video game design and work a lot with double fine productions doing character design and you do and a so lot forth. of gallery working, shows as well um, i do a lot of originals. gallery shows yeah mm -hmm. i work with arlo dick in paris and who I know a lot of you worked with. I had a show with Steven Silver a million years ago there. Yeah, that was a good time. That was a good time, man. Court, <laughs> I found you. Don't worry. We're coming for you. Bring you into the panelists. Okay, and uh, I'm going to send you a link to the board here. And it's probably a good time to uh, introduce Court Jones. Court is hey. another one of the, uh, what, three uh, Golden Nosy recipients that we have here for the Character Jam. That's going to be great. Uh, of course, for those of you that don't know, the Golden Nosy is like the Oscars of um, the Grand Master Award of the Spectrum kind of awards. or so. I don't know. It's a big award for character. <laughs> and... Steven Silver. Steven is, of course, another Golden Nosy recipient um, in his past. And, of course, he's done a lot of work for television, for film, for education, all sorts of stuff. Welcome, Steven. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, Sue Kim. I hope I didn't miss Hi. anybody else, but Sue Kim is... Uh, story artist at Netflix, has done many things in the past, um, including Adventure Time. All right, so did I miss anybody? My <laughs> list was getting all mixed up as I was kind of... Oh, Wouter, Wouter, oh, oh, oh my God, Tom. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tom. Nobody yeah. can forget Mr. Flurity here. Tom Flurity is, uh, is another powerhouse in character and illustration um and the daughter uh, the the father of four girls uh wow busy busy person so <laughs> welcome and a new grandfather by the way congrats congrats Ooh. old man flew hardy <laughs> <laughs> okay so that was our first kind of um that's our first subject there. <laughs> also, we have attendees for from Lightbox Expo. Okay, and if you are in the Zoom um, chat here, you can raise your hand and let me try to. If you want to ask a question, just raise your hand and um, I'll <laughs> give you the mic. Okay, otherwise, uh, some people are asking or typing in questions and somebody is typing in, Carlos Rue is typing in, where can I submit my photo? Uh, you can submit it by hashtagging uh, LBX character, okay? And then we will find it. And I'm actually gonna go on a little search right now on Instagram and tw 
and Twitter to find that fun photo for everybody. Okay, LBX character, Alan. Um, I think that says LNB character. First question here is not, not totally a question, but it's a comment from Amanda. Amanda says, Stephen has a unique accent. <laughs> yes, sure <does>. yes. <laughs> well, uh, I'm originally born in London, England, but moved to America when I was 10 years old. And that's where the funny accent comes from. People think I'm from New York or New Jersey, or there's like a, a mix. So that's the strangeness. So you're just not accepted anywhere. Is that what you're saying? That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> and. If anybody else has a question. Oh, uh, will this re recording be released later? Yes, the recording will be released later. Mm. Awesome, thanks for the question. <laughs> I got a question for you. Have, has any of you um, done any other drawing jams or like uh, did anything, any other highlights from Lightbox Expo? Yeah, I've been doing it, it's, been, it's a lot of fun. Any um, highlights? Highlights. Uh, oh, not really. <laughs> how, how about if, if I'm being if I'm being honest? Uh, no, <laughs> it was, it's just it's just a lot of fun. Okay, of fun. you see yeah. these four uh, people that I have just put up on the screen. No. Oh, oh. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's draw them all. Which oh, one? Wow. one oh, two, which three, one? Four. I can't. I can't see. Alan. One, two, three, wow. or four. Yeah, right on. Let's do you one. Let's start with the one and go. Wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alan. Who is our? Oh, are you are you copying two. them on the canvas? Yeah, yeah. I'll just copy. Okay. Okay. Since uh. And what, do we create a new window or what do we? I will plop it in, and then you can um when it comes in, then you could turn off your uh your layer or whatever. I see. And then you could yeah, new layer? start all over. That makes sense. Let's give me one second here. Okay. I'm clearing out, I'm ready to go. Um, and then we make a new layer? Yes. Try not to be overly excessive with your layers. Um, so there is a lot of you, so there can be a hundred layers altogether. Wow. Do we maybe we could merge all the all the previous ones? Yeah, beautiful. How do you merge it again? Uh, so the scissors with the crooked arrow icon, it's right beside oh, the I trash see. can. Yep, got it. Okay, awesome. Okay. All right, so here we go, Alan, first victim. All right, I'm trying to. Mine will not turn off. Hold on. Shoot, I gotta move my zoom thing over a little bit. <laughs> Everyone's so ready. This is Let's so live, everybody. Let's do this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. You make break. Grab your area. <laughs> 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 oh. Take claim your space. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, I don't oh my gosh. Where, I don't know where to go. This is my space. Was, this I'm just going to do in the corner. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Ah, whoops, whoops, what am I doing? I also what found uh, Alan in the chat. Hey, Alan. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> yeah, here's my space. Well, it's like off to races, but I can't get <laughs> hey, another layer going. <laughs> it don't want to work. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's Steven, Bobby, it's such a pleasure to see you guys. Bobby, thank you for coming up with this uh, unique and <laughs> so incredible way of having artists uh, together from around the world. Uh, uh, don't thank guys. me yet. We'll see how this one goes. <laughs> no, no mercy on my face, you, you all to hit it. <laughs> Give it your all. <laughs> if, if you had any anger repressed from the pandemic, <laughs> let oh. it out. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. Very appreciate it, Bobby. You're a blessing, man. <laughs> right, where and I... where are you calling in from, Alan? You're in Mexico, yeah? Uh, no, uh, I was born in Mexico, uh, but I live here in LA. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. No worries, no worries. <laughs> it's been a super long day. Um, <laughs> I should know that. I apologize. We actually, we know each other as well. Because um, he went to the 
we used to have a imaginism workshop house back in the day where people would come in and stay with us for like 30 days uh it and um we would teach them and everything anyhow it's great to see you alan thank you bobby yeah it was a great experience with you and tiber and the whole gang Unforget- unforgettable bro <laughs> Awesome. Uh, let's go to some questions here. The first one is from anonymous attendee. Um, this is for Do- this is for Domi. Did your inspiration for Bao come from personal experience? Oh, yes, very much so. Uh, uh, so for a long time, like even when I grew up, uh, my mom would always like hug me and be like, "Oh, I wish I could put you back in my stomach, so I knew exactly where you were at all times." And I'd be like, oh, that's so sweet, but really creepy, mom. <laughs> um, and that was kind of the, the inspiration for, for the story. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's, a, it's about a, it's like a modern day fairy tale, kind of like, like a, about a lonely old lady who uh, one day one of her dumplings comes to life and she, and she adopts it, but then he's a little shit, he grows up and he- and, and, and Oh, I love that story. To, yeah, and then she has to accept that he's uh, you know, growing up yeah, and has to beautiful. leave the nest. <laughs> My two-year-old uh, was terrified of that. <laughs> I know. I think she, I traumatized a lot of... She started crying. She's like, oh, no! <laughs> You're like, are you going to do that to me? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it was a little dark, but I feel like it was... It was awesome. Yeah, necessary for me to be like, this is just... It is, that's just that love, that intense parental love that's uh you know sweet but creepy and all consuming (laughs) i think a lot of parents can relate to that feeling and Mm -hmm. and a lot of teens can relate to it as well i think yeah definitely it's definitely working through stuff like (laughs) as i was making it yeah it's genius it's awesome thank you it's a good question My brother has the same kind of glasses, so really? I looked at him and I was like, oh man, my mom's not going to like this one. <laughs> she loved it. She loved it. All right. Next, uh, next question comes from Jenna. Jenna asks, uh, when drawing characters, what feature do you find you get the most variety out of? <laughs> Ooh, that's a t- what features of the characters? Mm. What features, uh, yeah, of, of variety? Yeah, it all hmm. kind of has variety, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's all contrasting one thing to the next. So, I mean, I think you can play with the variety in every aspect of the face, the nose, the eyes. Do you make them longer, wider, shorter? And I think for me, I'm just always trying to contrast one thing. I'm looking at the eyes in contrast to the nose, or I look from the nose in contrast to the mouth, and then so on. And I just try to figure out that. <laughs> Wait a second, what, what's that accent? <laughs> I think he's from New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there like uh, certain procedures that everybody has? Like, do you look for a certain section, a certain feature, and go outwards from that, or do you look for the overall shapes first, and then you start to build inwards, mm. or anything? Mm. I squint. I feel like if I squint and I just look at the, the, the photo in general, you can like pick out things that stand out. Sometimes. Anybody else want to add to that? I, I second that. I squint as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know there's like there's like two um, ways of caricaturing that's been written about, I think. Uh, it's either outside in or inside out, right? Mm. I know about this. You can either start with the shape of the, the head and then fill it in or start with a feature, like draw the eyes first and then expand outwards. Um, so I, I switch between those two methods, but personally, my way that I, my sort of rule that I tell myself is um, anything you put down, any decision you make, it's, it should always look like the person 
um, every step of the way, I think. Like, because if, if, you, if you put something down and it doesn't look like the person, it's hard to fix that, fix that. So like, if you draw just the eyes first, I think that that should already sort of resemble the person. And then it's easier to just build on that if, if you have that foundation. That's, that could be, it's one thing to make people resemble, right? It's another to make them like the character. Now, <laughs> some of you must have had <laughs> some experience doing live characters. I would like to hear any interesting stories that you might have of that. I, I can shoot one off straight away. I remember I was doing a live caricature and one of the things we'd always do was the gags, you know, two people are sitting next to each other and you'd go, okay, they're two friends and maybe I'm going to have one kid, uh, you know, holding the other as like a puppet or something, you know, so he's holding up his hand and the other kids just like a puppet in his hand. And I did that and there was a big crowd behind me and the mother started yelling at me saying, you turn my son into a puppet in front of all these people. <laughs> and she got so upset and yelled at me and then she went and complained with the management and they came over and then it all, all hell broke loose. But that was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> that was worth it. That was um, worth it. I thought, I thought it was gonna get worse. I thought it was like, you the have ones. the hand oh, of the friend worse. Up, the, <laughs> up the butt of the other person because it's a puppet. Well, yeah, it kind of is. It's like the hands mm. in the glove, right? So the hand's going up, holding them as like they're sticking their hand up through the shirt. Yeah. So the shirt is just dangling over their hand. But yeah, she she didn't like that. I, I, once, I, once had a, I once had a client get really angry and stand up and punch the table. Uh, and all the paint went everywhere. And the client said, you made me look like a boy. <laughs> and, I, and I got really confused. And then I realized it was a woman. And I, <laughs> hey, is that a joke? Come on. That really happened. Eh? Awesome. Yeah. Wow. I, did not, I didn't know the entire time that it was a lady. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, even from the voice. So I gave her some eyelashes and some Whoops. blush. And then she tipped me. Oh, nice. <laughs> really weird. <laughs> well, I remember one time, uh, you, you know, we used to do subway sketching, Sue and I, in Toronto, and a bunch of other people. We had like a group going on, and one time, um, the the newspaper reporters came with us. You remember this, Sue? And then this this one person got really, really upset. It wasn't at us drawing her, but it was at the photographer. Weren't you there? Oh, uh, probably. Yeah, I vaguely remember this. So you're the. I remember you. It was your drawing in the newspaper. What really? <laughs> yeah, because it said my name on it, and I'm like, <laughs> why? Is, yeah. Anyhow. Wait, the but the the article wasn't about someone getting mad, right? No, no, it was about okay. subway sketching. Okay. You don't remember that? I think I. Uh, I remember there being reported at some point. I don't know if I saw the actual article. Oh, okay. It was, was it your like the picture. Toronto Star? It was uh, Globe and Mail. Okay. Anyway. My photo? Or yeah, like it was you drawing. drawing. It was you drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have it? You guys have it me? No, I didn't keep it's it. one of those <laughs> false memories. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it says one of those false memories where it's like, you were there. It's like, you know, Bobby, this never happened. <laughs> I made up. I distinctly remember. And you were there. And you were there. I should totally do that to people. I'm gonna put that in my pocket for later. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, that's not me. Uh, I, I do just want to say that there was one story that I think people will benefit from out there who are starting something or want to do live characters. So my very first day drawing live caricatures, the people were talking to me and saying, hey, uh, how long you been doing caricatures from, uh, for and all that? And I said, oh, it's actually my first day. And they looked at each other and they then they got up and walked away and, uh -huh. and, didn't, and didn't even pay. And then my boss came back over and he said, hey, how's it going? I said, oh, I was drawing people and they walked away because I told them it was my first day. And he said, listen, from now on, if anyone ever asks you, just tell them you've been drawing them for two years. 
And uh, <laughs> that's it. So every time someone would say that, just to build confidence. So now all of a sudden, even though I wasn't really a professional at that point, they think you're a professional. So <laughs> something to think about. Huh. Yeah, fake, fake it until you make it. it. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Now, why don't we uh, take another question from the audience here. Jason says, have you ever done a character for someone and when you give it to them, they reply, that doesn't look like me at all. How did you, uh, how did that make you feel? All the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's why you don't draw friends and family ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. I must be a good friend to you, Steve, because you've never drawn me. <laughs> That's right. That's what you know. You're a real friend. <laughs> well, let's go. Another oh, question. No. All my, yeah. all my brushes are gone. Oh, no. Or not brushes, but my... Um, Controls? Hmm. Controls. Oh, because you're not oh, select a brush. Because I'm not. There, I got it. Dupe. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Uh Here's a question, a quick one. Will any of you be doing any demos at Adobe Max? Uh, what that? <laughs> oh, Adobe Max happens in LA. I, I went to it a couple of years ago. It's, it's pretty awesome. They had a private uh, concert for everyone in the end, like for all the, um, was it for Billy all Eilish? the attendees or something? It was, <laughs> it was Beck. Uh, I oh, never... Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't like a huge Beck fan or anything, but watching him perform, I kind of became one, you know. I was like, wow, I cool. didn't know I recognized that many songs they did. That's um, awesome. <laughs> did you tell him? You know, I could take you or leave you, Beck, before. <laughs> but it's Just uh, being it's, honest. Yeah, it's an event where it's more like towards, um, I felt like it's more towards professionals. Uh, there was a lot of really good, speakers though ron howard was there speaking uh tiffany haddish um a bunch of like crazy youtube like really really high up there um youtubers and stuff it was fun um, those youtubers <laughs> isn't that a profession that you never would have thought would be a profession uh, yeah <laughs> we may have to be in that business given this pandemic but i have a question though has any one of you ever gotten into any serious trouble because of this kind of work <laughs> yes my teachers especially in school when i was doing it in school a lot would get in trouble but um yeah and if someone i've been again if, if you're doing it live all the time like i, I have been yelled at by people if they find if they catch me looking at them if i've actually been in a place like someone's like I, are you drawing me you know and there's like a threatening situation there where it's just like uncomfortable and i'll just uh turn to another sheet of paper quit you know if they're over there so no no no, no i'm just drawing this person but yeah <laughs> um i actually got death threats before oh, and, wow. and uh i did a cover for the weekly standard of the president of iran Oh, no. And and uh, I got tons of of hate messages and oh, curse man. curse your family and um, you know I pray to Allah that you die and crazy stuff that I was like okay this is nuts and then um, and then I received a care package from Iran in the mail oh and I don't and it was and it freaked me out so I called the FBI whoa and that is told, serious as one does yeah and I told them what what was this is all about and everything I, and i was terrified and uh they came and they got it and then i didn't hear from them for a while and then i finally called because it was like strange that i haven't heard anything and they said oh it was just a, a care package it was mixed nuts oh and so i don't know if it had anything to do it was just very random that it what? was sent to me after these crazy <laughs> messages and stuff mm. wow um they were exploding. They were exploding. It was, it was just funny too because like Tom Dom's done a lot of covers for the Weekly Standard, and um, and so he knows the art director is the coolest guy in the world. But um, I was talking with the art director like, yeah, this this is kind of scary, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a funny cartoon caricature, and now I'm getting weird things sent to me in the mail. Well, but, that's uh, a lesson. Nuts. That's that when you know scary. you've made I, uh, it. 
I uh, drew, uh, I was actually at a sort of a celebrity event once drawing live and I drew Ron Jeremy and he uh, said he was going to F- <laughs> kill me when he saw it. After I <laughs> Wait, I don't think that was, a, a... I don't think that was such a death threat as more than just a joke. <laughs> Wait, that's those, those are bragging rights. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Jeremy wanted to kill me. <laughs> that's awesome. That's code that's word. That, for that should be a you. t-shirt or a bumper sticker. <laughs> Yeah, he was actually one. really he was really sweet though actually party. oh really can i kill you sweetly <laughs> you know, i got just... one i got one that involves silver actually we're having oh. dinner uh <laughs> at the red pearl or whatever uh you know that, oh. that restaurant by um after Comic-Con. comic-con yeah and so lots of celebrities are around things like that we go to this restaurant and who's there it's hero nakamura from heroes Oh, I was there too. Oh, cool! Right? Oh, shoot! You were there <laughs> and too. I was there too. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Well, and Bobby kept bowing down to him. <laughs> <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but I was uh, talking to I was talking to my wife, and I was like, "Hey, that's Hero Nakamo." You know, we watched the show, <laughs> and then and then Heidi Silver's wife goes, "Who's that? Who are you talking about?" Oh, that person? Well, you're a fan? And we're, I was like, yeah, I, I kind of watched the show. And, he, and she's like, we're going to go over there. and Or because I was like, I have a character of him. It was, yeah, yeah it was in my book. Remember in, you did that? Uh, yes, in Jason Seiler's book, I had a little page <laughs> in there. Uh, but it wasn't flattering, right? No. <laughs> and then, so, so <laughs> Heidi uh, says, well, we're going to go over there. We're going to take a picture. You're going to get the signed. And I'm like, no, Heidi, I don't want to. And she's like, I think she thought I was, I was being shy. So then she's like, no, we're doing this, Bobby. We're doing this. She grabs me, gets the book, goes over there. This is my friend from Canada. He's a big fan. And he did a picture of you. Show him the picture, Bobby. I'm like, uh, it's literally like a circle, a complete perfect circle with a little bit of hair on the top <laughs> and his face really small in the middle of the circle rendered you know uh not pleasing so he's it's a hilarious caricature it's really funny <laughs> he's... well he's he's you know he's smiling at me he's holding the book he looks down about to sign it and then his face just changes and... oh. <laughs> he's very polite about it but it was enough to for me to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like i remember when we when we left the restaurant we were walking away and we we're just dying like it was the funniest thing ever it was so funny uh yeah in your memories <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it was good times. all right we didn't Alan, draw him ever again i think we're pretty much done with uh alan here why don't we give him a break and um I'm going to actually, yeah, sorry, Thanks, continue Alan. on. Let me, let me make a new board and then I'm going to give you guys the new board um, and then we'll pop on there because then we can start with a fresh thing and yeah. Who's is this one? Is that you, Ronnie? This is me, sir. That's amazing. That's great. That was me. I just so... try to stick next to Ricky Nerva because he makes me nervous. <laughs> that is great. I send him bombs in the mail, that's why. Oh. <laughs> nuts in the mail. That's right, nuts. <laughs> nuts. No server. You don't want the FBI guy. listening that's in on nuts. this. Oh, are we starting fresh? Uh, yes, one second here. But I didn't finish. I right, just keep going, you got a few more seconds. Just from getting. Into so it. it's a layer limits reach, so I guess can we just uh, delete uh, uh, the layers? Here, let me, I'm going to put into the chat our next victim, our, our um, <laughs> subject. <laughs> Telling it like it is, Bobby, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, everybody. Let's see here. These are all great. Yeah, it says so no more layers. How do you merge? So in the chat, yeah, in the chat, I sent you a new board. If you oh, guys want to oh, look oh. into just the panelists, oh. by the way, if uh, if you guys are watching, um, not the attendees, sure. but the panelists. Okay. Oh, I see it now. Yep. So this I don't see one, nothing. 
<laughs> in the chat, Ronnie, of Zoom? Of Zoom. Oh, oh gotcha, okay. Gotcha. In the chat, chat, Let me chat, get chat. to the Zoom. Clean your space. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> free for all. Here we go. Oh, We're going to share wait. the screen. Here's our next bit, uh, subject. Hey, here we go. Where's the... Where's the... <laughs> Where is it? Hey, ah. Where's Oh, there. There's my screen. Oh, right there. So bad. <laughs> Play it again. I can't find it, Bobby. Uh, okay, I am going to. Yeah. I, honest, I don't even know where I am right now. Okay, okay. I know. In Zoom, do you guys see the chat? Yeah. Okay, I just put it back uh, in there again. Do you privately. see the link? Okay. Oh, see it. I see it. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, sweet. There you go. All right. This is from Angelica from Twitter. Art by Angelica. Thank you for offering yourself up for, to be the subject. Right on. Uh, let's go to yeah, some. Ricky, my neighbor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I love it. I like being neighbors with you, bro. Oh, uh -huh. be my neighbor. Okay. I'm going to be late. I can't find nothing. Hold on. Let's go to another question here, shall we? So, Anamika asks, has anyone ever been, a f or sorry, I really said that one. To everyone who would like to see more in today's visual media, uh, or sorry, what would you like to see more in today's media? And what do you miss from the past? It's kind of a general question, I guess. Hmm. What do you guys miss from the past? I miss not having uh, everybody being so connected, <laughs> even though we're, we're totally separated now. But you know what I mean? Like, I thought you were going to like get into like, uh, you know, uh, tube socks and Walkmans. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, my answer sounds weird. It's just more like it just being emotionally exhausted from social media is like mm -hmm. something I do not, you know, particularly enjoy. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why don't we go on to another question here. Scott, this one's for <laughs> you. Have you mm. ever done any Gravity Fall uh, Great Showdown yet? What does that mean? I have not done that, no. no what does I that haven't. mean? What is that? I do a series called Great Showdowns, which is like a little picture, little moments of film of little oh. characters standing in front of each other of tension from famous moments from movies. So good. You know, and they're just standing happily looking at each other. And sometimes they're like little objects that are smiling, you know, like Bruce Willis versus a bunch of smiling glass, things like that. Like, so um, that's all it is. <laughs> it's something I do online. So okay. I've never, but I've never done Gravity Falls though which means I would just do a moment of tension between characters in Gravity Falls. Like and where, would be a good would, one. where do people go to see that? That's a great showdowns.com. Awesome. Are they always movies that you draw or do you, do you do characters on that TV site, shows? Yeah, usually, yeah. But sometimes I'll do, I did, I did one for Lost a long time ago and I did one for Breaking Bad oh, okay. a while back, but, but usually it's movies and stuff. Yeah. Depends. This one is for Bright from Stephanie. How has growing up in Africa given you a unique or new perspective in your art? Wow, um, it's a big one. And, and the one thing I try to always not do is speak on behalf of all of Africa. I can't even speak on behalf of all of my country. <laughs> but um, yeah, I totally get what she means. Um, Personally, I have uh, I have learned to see everything that may seem a disadvantage as an advantage, and so um, uh, my outlook for can uh, Bobby, mm -hmm. can you I just repeat the question? Oh, um, so how has growing up in uh, Ghana, Africa, whatever. Mm -hmm. She says Africa, uh, given you a unique or new perspective in your art. 
Well, the <laughs> this is like a, a thesis level kind of question. Yeah, yeah but, it's a hard question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so let me take my experience uh, in this Lightbox Expo, for instance, as a clear example. So I notice the inspiration for art is very, very different because I was exposed to like a totally different kind of content and then everybody else is exposed to another kind of content and so um, when it even comes to matters like subject matter for creating art i realize a lot of people may be into certain movies or cartoons or they know certain characters that i may have heard of because of my personal research but are not things that maybe have that much appeal to me. For instance, I'm drawing pictures of Billie Eilish, who I know because I've, I'm like, I have the privilege of being on the internet and knowing about her. But uh, for instance, she is not a musician I would easily listen to because I, I have a whole lot of different artists from here that I feel more connected to. And so whenever I have the chance to create arts, I think it's an opportunity to also bring some of my um, home influence or inspiration to share with other people. And that's one thing that I can I can think about. What's the art industry like in Ghana, where you are? Is it big? Do they like? Do they respect the art industry? Artists? I hear all sorts from different parts of the you know the world. What's it like in Ghana? Um, yeah, like it's 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 like a, it's not that different from whatever that I'm sure goes on elsewhere. But a lot of the industries are young, and a lot of projects are artists led. So maybe there isn't that huge industry yet but there are people who, who are based here who are doing um, work that um, is well received anywhere else in the world um, for instance there isn't that kind of like movie industry here where artists like myself can get connected to studios to do work and so you might have to look elsewhere, look outside to find that kind of work. But again, for me, it's an opportunity. So that's how I, I, I've chosen to see it. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I knew of Bright from the internet. So whatever you're yeah. doing, <laughs> it's reaching. Yeah, you know, it's reaching. Yeah. working. <laughs> it's great. Awesome. Jessica asks, uh, how do you guys know how far to stylize a character or a character? <laughs> I don't think you can go far enough sometimes. I know. That, so there's the Ricky question. answer I'm looking for. <laughs> you can't go far enough. Actually, in, in our mean caricature night sessions, you go to the point where everybody is um, kind of howling in disgust. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you feel like, okay, now I'm reaching you. <laughs> and can you uh tell everybody what what you mean by mean character night like what who who started this by the way yeah i i had started it at pixar a long time ago because uh i'm a mean person <laughs> <laughs> no not true <laughs> and i, I wanted to... is when when ronnie says mean i think during mean caricature night the meaner you are the more you love that person yeah, really that, that is true. And, that is true. And and if yours and everyone's laughing because how mean it was, if that means he caught the spirit and the essence of that person in such a unique way, that that transcends just a drawing, you really can feel the person in the drawing. And then it's because that person is observed and knows the person so deeply, instead of just mm -hmm. um, on the surface. And then when that comes through, it's kind of like the Hirschfeld thing where actors and actresses would say, that looks more like me than me. So I think <laughs> when it's mean, it's actually a lot of love. 
That is a great answer, Ricky. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Because we do this outside of Pixar. We don't, it's not a Pixar sanctioned event, but eventually they started accepting it. So we gather a bunch of, of superstar caricatures like Ricky and Domi, and then they kind of savage each other right in front of each other. So it's kind of a, <laughs> kind of like a, a <laughs> find targets across the table or like at a restaurant, like here in Oakland, and we'll face off each other and they will kind of like throw a mean caricature of someone in front of them. And then they'll get kind of, oh my God, yeah. look what you, oh, <laughs> so the game is on. Mm -hmm. And that, that person now has to kind of retaliate and so it's kind of an arms race of meanness and how disgusting you can make the other person look and throughout the whole night what we're doing is kind of like this open warfare all across the table there's about like 20 to 30 people having at it with beer and pizza and then it just gets worse and worse as the night goes on and better and, and better amazing. yes it gets better and better and then i, uh, I suffered eventually people kind of get tired of just being just standardly mean you start going at it like personally what are your likes dislikes the things you wear all the time <laughs> and then kind of like the the thing that you're most insecure about it shows up <laughs> oh wow yeah and don't, then, don't me do you remember when i met you during the caricature night and then oh, i said yeah because yeah, before i worked on um bow with you and then uh -huh. it's like i was like damn she's amazing and they said oh it's on now girl and you went bring it on motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember that you don't remember that <laughs> I re and i was like this girl is awesome what? She's yeah. and it was it was like the the meaner quote unquote meaner you got the more it was like amazing drawings for me oh, from in my wow. it was oh, that's how I you get the respect like the, I guess. yeah i mean <laughs> My favorite part is like like later later into the night when you're running out of ideas for meanness and then you just start drawing fusions of people like I'll combine <laughs> Ronnie with Ricky. And yes. then like, yeah, that's put, true. Put another caricature like in the nostril of of somebody and then yes. <laughs> oh God, you started that where they would embed another person in the body of another person. <laughs> yeah. So I started calling it. Um, um transport mishap you know those, those teleporter mishaps is what i call them so they start mashing up two people together in the most uncomfortable of ways mm -hmm. so yeah, some person's head would protrude out of the groin of another person yeah yeah <laughs> It'd be like the doctor, and then Ronnie would be like a tumor growing out of his neck or yes. something. Like that. <laughs> that is awesome. Those are the best. Those Those are the and best they were all done on paper. Mm -hmm. So there's evidence of this in the uh, archives of, of Pixar. Somewhere. So yes. I, once, I once had one of my colleagues draw my face on a page and flip over to the next page to draw my ears. Yeah. Have this, have this, yes. Ouch. <laughs> and that was the last time I ever played that game. Oh. <laughs> then I that is fantastic. I think, in, you know, uh, obviously, this is a, a, a very great answer. But personally, I feel that it, it is a personal choice how far you want to take a caricature. I don't think there is a, any, uh, one, not just one answer to w how far you should take a caricature. It's a, it's a personal choice. And some people like to, to you know, push it as far as they can, but you can also do a caricature where the, the goal is not to, to push as far as you, you can, but to uh, capture someone's personality in, in a pushed way. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there, there's many different ways of doing caricatures, actually. Totally. Well said. I find that, I mean, my style is already much simpler than everyone else's seems like, but if I get really caught up in the likeness of someone and I'm trying to like, and it, usually it's because I'm trying to get too detailed with it. Okay. And I find if I stop it and just simplify it more, I could sometimes find, find the shapes better. 
So true. Just like get too noodly in there, you know? I know. Yeah. I hate it. I'm like undoing shape. so much right now. But, yeah. Yeah, and also, uh, if anybody so has good. any questions in the panel, in the audience that wants to say something live, um, you could raise your hand and I'll come find you. There's a lot of people right. chatting like, I will go toe to toe with both of you, Domi and Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> toe to toe to toe. Nice. All right, right, we have what you asked for. Those two are savage. Challenge accepted. I'm, I'm sending you nuts in the mail. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed nuts. <laughs> All right, we have Stephanie on here. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, where are you yes. from? What's your question? I'm from Maryland, and my question is um, I don't know if anyone's seen that behind the scenes for uh, the making of Frozen 2. But if you have, uh, is that sort of a realistic depiction of what it's like to make an animated film where it's sort of done in chunks with different artists working on different pieces and it kind of comes together kind of towards the end? Is that sort of what the process is like? Kind uh, Yeah, pretty. I mean, I haven't seen the Frozen 2 uh, making of, but from what you described, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's like, at some point you're writing and storyboarding and, and and like animation and all the departments are happening all at once and it's kind of a kind of a clusterfuck <laughs> <laughs> and then you pray that it all comes together and then you're like working around sequences and shots that you've already approved um to go into animation so you can't change maybe this minute in the middle of the movie but you can change the scenes around it uh yeah it's it's pretty nuts but i i don't know like has anyone here worked on frozen 2 i i heard on the grapevine that it was like a very stressful crazy production but i feel like most most feature what film aren't? projects are yeah there's, there's like i feel like it's rare to hear about something that went really smoothly and a lot of the best films mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. through that too right uh yep why don't we go on to a question from Joel? Joel asks, are there people you've had a really challenging time figuring out how to do a character of them? Yeah. Um, personally, yeah. personally, I think for me, it helps to spend a lot of time studying whoever I'm going to paint or make a caricature of so that I know what they look like and I could probably describe them by word of mouth before I even draw. Then I would know which features on their person I could play with. So if I got handed a new subject that I've never seen before, it would take some time as compared to maybe doing a caricature of someone I know, a movie star or my president or someone who is famous and I've seen all the time. I think that helps me. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Do we have time for one more? Are you guys tired? Do you, are we cool to do one more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Nice. Energizing. All right. I think you might like this one. Just give me a second here. Oops. Um, done. Okay. So I'm going to put this into the chat. Here it comes, panelists. And the link is in the chat. This guy says, do your worst. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I have been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Jared Bittner. All right, Jared. You asked for it. Um, wait, I'm not there yet. Save me a spot. Like the west. To the corner. <laughs> um, I'll put another link in the <laughs> chat for the panelists, Tom. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Uh, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody said, Masse is everything. Oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> All right. So, um, any anybody that had a character or subject that was just really difficult, felt really difficult to them to really capture it before they captured like, it. Like attractive people are really hard. To yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I did a caricature for someone of L. McPherson, and there was just nothing to hold on to and grab a hold of. It. Like, mm. there was, you know what I mean? Like, hey, spoof a beautiful, perfect face. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> it was yep. really tough. Uh, beautiful women are tough. I don't really think there's a slam dunk anywhere because if you have the assumption that, oh, I, can, I got this person, it's like, it, it, it's tough every time in, in one sense. You, you got to approach it freshly every time and, and have a state that's, that's cool. Is there a thing <laughs> where, like, you know, one person decodes how to really, really capture the spirit of that person and then they see somebody else do the same kind of code, you know? And then you're like, hey, what uh, the hell? Okay. Well, I think it takes it took me a couple of years to learn how to draw Obama, and it took me a, a number of years to draw, you know, any any other characters. It, it just takes time to get your feel and get the understanding. At least for me. Yeah, I would say that in, when I went to Cal Arts, and there was a bunch of all of our friends that kind of would do caricatures of each other on the walls. We would kind of find these common symbologies for different everybody's faces like oh this person has this kind of a nose and it can be boiled down to this and they just kind of get ingrained it's hard to get out of that groove but it was funny we did a zoom caricature night several times over the pandemic and um we hadn't done it for maybe over 10 years and it was looking at each other's faces like oh man we've changed so much we have to find new symbols for <laughs> how we look <laughs> noses are bigger and getting older and stuff <laughs> I found it interesting that I've drawn Trump before and people will be like, oh, make his hands smaller. He has small hands. And I think that when you have this idea that you always must do small hands, I think you kind of eliminated the possibility of, of, of yeah. Of, 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 mm -hmm. there's, there's many ways to do it. You, 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 to, to just go into a template like, oh, he has small hands and everybody must draw him a small dinky hand. That's not always true, you know. No matter who, almost in, oh, sorry. I was going to say, whoever the subject is, whatever it's a job for a client, like a commission or an illustration, the thing that always screws me up with trying to find the likeness is when I, I have advanced feedback. Like they want, you, they're directing you ahead of time and they get in your head and you second guess every single decision you make. Uh, and sometimes that pressure is self-imposed. Like I might say, it's, oh, I got to draw this person prettier. They're not going to like it. And then I just, I don't yeah. make good decisions then. You have to be free to make the decisions you want to right. on any character, whether they're an easy face or a hard face. <laughs> Does anyone else experience that? The pressure mm -hmm. from the client? Yeah. Uh, anytime they start not, you know, putting the brakes on you or putting parameters or boundaries on you, you start choking up. At least I do. Yeah. They gotta let, let let you be free to do what you do. You know. Have you ever done a character of a uh, celebrity and then you heard from the celebrity? <laughs> okay, without saying too much, I did do a uh, Katie Kirk, and um, I did this. It was from a few years ago, and I put it up and I tagged her. And she immediately got back to me and said, ouch, that really hurt. And I actually felt, <laughs> <laughs> I actually felt bad because you don't realize these people are human. And that they, they are this. And, you know, it just kind of made me think twice about the expression. Maybe more women. I, I'm not really into expression women, but a man, you know, maybe. And not that that sounds sexist. It's just I try to be gentle and not, not really be mean to women and, and young young teens, you know. You're too nice. You're Sounds too like nice. the opposite approach of what people at Pixar are doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll uh, would this be a celebrity but I got 
I got a word from the Chinese embassy in Ghana. Oh. Because I did a painting that captured their president and their ambassador. There was a scandal going on and I made a painting about it and they made a press conference and spoke about my work and literally threatened our government to silence the media and myself. Mm. So oh, that was that was wow. scary, but it gave my work a lot of attention. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I that's how I saw your work from that, that painting on the donkey, oh. right? On the mule. Was that the one on the mule? That wasn't even it. No, oh. no, 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 no. That's, no. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was previous one. I didn't think that was that bad. No, there was a previous one, but it was tied to a certain illegal mining issue that was going on. That is still going on in, in Ghana. Oh. And it had heavy Chinese involvement. So Yikes. I made a painting about it and I put it on my Instagram over the weekend and the next Monday all the TV stations wanted to speak with me. And then there was a press conference. And and then we, we invited the embassy to an art exhibition. And I had prints of the painting shown there. And they, they attended. And they were posed by it and were smiling. And blah, 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 blah. Initially, they, they had like a very harsh reaction to it. Oh. So. Well, you survived to tell the tale. So that's pretty good. <laughs> How about, um, I was thinking of maybe doing a different subject. I got a good one. Yeah. Are you guys up for it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of uh, this one? Oh. Is that a good one? This is, it's like what you're saying, challenging uh, when you have somebody that doesn't have a giant nose or something like that. What do we do? Just create a new layer for this one? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. And I'll, I'll put up, I'll actually put two subjects just so um, more people can have a chance. So you can kind of go towards oh, the oh. one that you like the most. Sorry, I'll shrink this down a little bit too. Okay, this is the first one. Um, and This one is the second one. Let me paste this in here. Oops. Um, what happened, Schwan? Sorry? Oh. oh, never mind. Sorry, I got a little text. Uh, but that was just the software. This guy, look at this guy. Oh, That's a character. Yeah. I this looks like a Jason Siler character if I ever seen one. That's it. That's it. Okay. Gotta start a new one there. It also okay. looks like Yeah. <laughs> it could be I could see this as a character for many people. Here's a question from Samuel about balance. How do you guys balance working at studios, for those of you that work at studios, and working on personal work? Mm -hmm. Last question. It's ultimate mystery. I'm pretty there bad at no it. There is no balance in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you find that you, um, it's harder to kind of turn off work because you're, you're in quarantine and you've been working at home? Oh, yeah. I just find like for me drawing and, and 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 doing all that stuff during the day is like when I when uh when the day is done and and I log off I just don't want to do what I've been doing all day so I don't work on pro personal stuff anymore I've been really bad about it um so I just been watching lots of shitty reality tv and not drawing at all <laughs> That's okay. My spare time <laughs> and bad. So well, relaxing is it. important too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anybody else actually do uh, personal work while also working uh, full time? I actually took some time off to do personal work. Yeah, it's interesting. So I'm, so I I don't 
you know, when I'm on a project, I, I don't really have the time to uh, to do a lot of personal stuff. So that's why I decided to to take a break and focus on just that. Nice. I throw in between. I really have to do something, but I don't really want to necessarily go do a commission or something. I'll draw in between, try to just draw as much as I can for myself, and then I, when it's absolutely crucial, then I go a little more east of yeah, Tom, you post a lot, and I, it looks like most of it is not, um, you know, client work. Yeah, I'm trying to get myself in a spot where I can just do what I want. That's taking some time, but uh, I, I just have all these things that I really want to do, and so I, I just try to really. One thing I found and started doing is, is getting sleep. That's the priority for me. Mm -hmm. So I important. Properly and get enough. You know, because everybody always says, "Gotta get up at five. Gotta get up at five. And the real issue isn't what time you get up; it's how much sleep you get. Because mm -hmm. that actually does affect me. And so as I'm getting, you know, six and a half, seven, that's that's a game changer. And then I'm fresh and super excited. And you know, I t I found when I changed my diet then I was able to have more energy and that helped with, you know, right. doing more stuff. What, what, uh, what specifically, uh, what, what kind of a diet? Carbs, carbs brought me down, you know, <laughs> carbs make me like sluggish, um, fried food, of course. Uh, when I was like a lot of, I try to do more like, um, like 70% is leafy greens. And then I, I feel like I could, actually totally function on five hours of sleep or whatever. Um, that's pretty much been the last three weeks. Still drink hot, hot water? Yeah, I used to drink hot water with lemon and honey, yeah. but now I, I just drink hot water. <laughs> I remember being at lunch with you and you ordered hot water and I started laughing. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> And you said, well, my grandma is like 180. And I was like, <laughs> she's 102. That's incredible. So, so this is her second pandemic. How messed Whoa. up is that? Whoa. Crazy. Right? Because it was the, what was it? The Spanish flu. 1918, yeah. Yeah. Gee, that's uh, amazing. Hmm. Uh -huh. she's, she's badass. Yeah. Do you have any tips for us? Yeah, actually, I asked her recently, and she was just like, about the, you know, pandemic, how she doing, all this stuff, and she's like, you know, you forget that I couldn't talk to my family for like 50 years when China became communist, and I was stuck in Taiwan. Oh, crazy. Wow. Right, couldn't even write a letter, so she was just like, you know, be thankful for the slice of life you got, and that's, that's how you live, you'll have many more slices. Right, mm -hmm. when you that's really great. appreciate it. Mm. That's yep. great advice. Words that's of great. wisdom. Yeah, there's this other time, this is gonna get dark, but um, <laughs> there's this other time I was having a buffet uh, lunch with my grandma and she's, we both saw this person fall to his demise from like three stories Whoa. up. <gasps> yeah, wow. right outside of the restaurant everybody was screaming except for my grandma she was like there's only a two-hour limit here get <gasps> some food <laughs> yeah, grandma's hardcore how dark is that oh my gosh wow. you're messing with your grandma keeps <laughs> her eye on the prize i like it um or we... she's seen she's seen a lot of it yeah it's yeah. like context big deal yeah nowadays yeah, yeah, but. what apps now, <laughs> nowadays she goes in and out of like reality you know like this time and everything and sometimes like she goes back to like the 20s and 30s and she's oh, like oh you know scared which area of china am i in because if i'm in the wrong area i'll get beaten or arrested oh well, yeah okay. That's really crazy. Something that we can't even really relate to that much anymore, right? Hopefully never get a chance to have first-hand knowledge. Yes. 
Absolutely. Um, anyhow, <laughs> where did we segue to something happier here? Uh, you know what? <laughs> We're all alive. We're all able to breathe in the air. That's pretty good, just by itself. Well, not quite well, this air. Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, or in the Bay Area, area it's really bad. Yeah, it's bad right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, are there any character artists that you personally really admire or are inspired by, not including the panelists? You know what? I, one person I really appreciate his caricatures is Hannock Piven. You guys know Hannock Piven's work? Mm, He's yes. a, he uses um, found objects, and um, the found objects represent the, per the person for him. And he can create just a really simple uh, caricature with, of like Woody Allen, for example, and he'll just use a a, 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 a banana for the nose and put some sunglasses. <laughs> That's and it's really, it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, it's really I've great. Looking, I've been looking a lot at uh, David Levine. Um, oh yeah. He's just been really uh, blowing me away. And just just to kind of go back to it and remind myself like where I want to go and what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Really is um, David Levine. If no one knows, he, he, he died, but he was, he was actually a great painter as well. Like very accomplished as a uh, as a fine artist, and yet you know he was just really solid. And um, he was always in the New York Times as well. Very big New York Times. Anybody in the audience yeah. want to raise your hand and ask a question? Feel free. I will pick one of you. Zara, you have the mic. Hello. Hi. Uh, it's Hi. Good, <laughs> uh, good to see you all here, not being able to see you guys in person this year. Uh, I just want to ask a question from Jason. I was wondering what caricature he drew that he got threatened by because I have some clarification that the package was for tanking him. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm Iranian. <laughs> oh. Who was it from? So, <laughs> who was it from? I don't know who was it from. I'm, I'm just telling you that you probably drew someone that in a dictator dictatorship country, they actually uh, have really bad penalties for people if they're from the country. So the people threatened you weren't weren't the people of the Iran, were the extremists and the government. And some oh, yeah, other yeah. people didn't like the government, were happy about it that they send you care package possibly. <laughs> but because they're from Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. No, I was confused for a second. No, I, that's that's exactly what I thought afterwards is it was probably like something someone was actually trying to be nice. Um but it didn't seem like that at first when it's like the um, order of events that happened that led yeah. to the package uh, yeah. yeah different right. cultures different cultures different people and the pistachio they send you is really like for appreciation it's like a yeah that's what people do from there. and now 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 you know i love yeah. this how no this one, did, he ever get, did, did he ever get his nuts back from the fbi no i did not um, uh, but I haven't gotten my nuts back from my ex-wife yet either, so... Oh! oh. <laughs> but I'm pumped! Uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right. That's one. Look at what picture has to draw. Well, thank awesome. you so much for the, the awesome... Uh... That's great clarification. Yeah, ah. there you go. Now we know. <laughs> yeah, one yeah, time... Uh... I've been avoiding visiting Iran for all these years now, so... It's... <laughs> now I'm ready to go. But they don't want you because they're banning <laughs> Americans from everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I promise I won't cough on anyone. Uh, Daniela says, do you have, do you guys have a favorite go-to film, an animated or not? Oh. Spirited Away is my go-to. I like watching it to feel good. <laughs> Back to the future. Oh, I love Back to the Future. Awesome. Fury's um, Big Adventure. That's great. <laughs> the Hateful Eight. 
Whoa. That's intense. I love that movie. <laughs> my god. I <laughs> cried when I watched it for the first time. <laughs> I was like, this is so mean. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. That's it's great. It's beautiful, though, yeah. I love it's the film. I really like the filming a lot in that movie. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. The next question should be, what movie have you cried at the last one? Oh, yeah. Anything. Sometimes it's a Anything. commercial. You know, you know, who knows? I got a, I got a, this is a true story. Um, I think this only happened after I started having kids, but I never cried in movies ever. And now I'll cry when I, I see a car commercial or something. <laughs> but like, I remember t when I took my two older daughters to see Shrek 4, no joke. Uh, I, at one point I just lost it in Shrek 4 and I start, I was crying so hard and my daughters were embarrassed. They're like, what's going on? And I, it's just the craziest thing, but yeah, I, I lost it at Shrek Four. Oh. <laughs> fucking fucking Shrek Four. Me, it was tweets not too long ago. It was like videos of uh, Chadwick Boseman. Oh yeah. Know, oh. There's Bobby bringing it dark again. Oh my god, I did, I did. <laughs> Shrek Four, that was awesome. I like that one. <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. Uh somebody asks a funny question. Do you like to eat or drink something while drawing? Uh what is it? <laughs> That's an odd question. Mushrooms? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh -oh. All right. Well, this has been awesome. Um do you guys have any advice for anybody that uh, wants to do characters, wants to get into it. It can be very intimidating. It's almost like, yeah. I don't know, but go ahead. Anybody? Yeah, I would say one of the biggest things that I did for myself when I was personally learning to draw real uh, live characters at theme parks, I would always <clears throat> find caricature artists that I really admired. That could be from Mort Drucker, uh, Sebastian Kruger, uh, whoever, David Levin, whoever it was. And then I'd grab photographs of that person try to find try to seek the reference that they actually used and then i could compare and go why did they make the decisions they made and that was a very helpful way for me to figure out oh okay they focused on the the chin or they focused on the nose or there, there was a subtlety in the eyes and that's something that i would always do awesome good advice. that's good advice i have the best answer for that can just take like schools and classes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and Sh Shwen, how's like? Do you you've taken Jason's class actually, right? So it must yeah. be kind of weird drawing with. That he's now. drawing right next to mine right now. It's like <laughs> <laughs> I've taken a Jason's class, your class, Stephen Silver's class, Tom Fuhadi's class. I I'm looking at Walter's class right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Dedicated. It's awesome. I think, too, you know, you, you, you study the ones that, 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 you, that inspire you, and then, you know, that could take a couple of years, and you, you, you just study and, and make, make, write down what it is you love about each artist that's speaking to you, and then mimic them. Do it. Do your own, and then work through repetition, and, and then eventually shut the books, you know, and just don't look at anybody for a while and i and you know and i think that it just takes years really to do it and don't give up i remember uh jack davis and mort drucker being the first artists that i really wanted to emulate anybody else have uh oh, yeah. you know al hirschfeld's caricatures for me is like masterful it's minimum amount of line work with maximum information. So that's kind of where I'm coming from is how do I boil it down to the simplest thing and find that essence of that person in just the least amount of lines. That's really tough to do. Oh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Well, this has been fantastic. Um, I'm just going to take a little quick tour around all these beautiful sketches here 
I love how Voter, you didn't even bother drawing that second eye. It's great. Oh, I can't see it. It's <laughs> <laughs> genius. These are fantastic. Such different versions. Yeah, I think it's a fun it's a fun puzzle to try to do. Like drawing in Photoshop is cool because even just like selecting the two eyeballs and moving them just a little bit closer together or a little bit further apart or a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and then like you find that sweet spot and you're like, whoa, that looks like that person. Just like moving it just little bits, which you can't get when you're drawing on paper or anything, but it is kind of a nice thing. Like I'll draw all my drawings on paper first and then I'll scan them in and then kind of cut them all the pieces out on, the, on in Photoshop and move them around. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just moving those pieces around with a little puzzle, sometimes you find that little sweet spot. Yeah, sure. So true. That's like very satisfying. Well, this has been quite a treat for me. I'm sure it's been quite a treat for the attendees. And I want to thank the attendees for showing up and uh, giving us all these awesome questions and everything. And of course, uh, we want to thank our sponsor, Schoolism, which is my company, but I'll thank them anyways. Uh, you know, Schoolism does a lot of uh, classes online. I'm not selling this very well, but it's going to be really awesome. If you join up, you'll see that there's over 35 classes with a subscription. And currently, we're doing a promotion for Lightbox Expo. If you put, punch in the promo code LBX2020, you'll save a huge chunk off of a one-year subscription. And last but not least, actually the most, I want to thank our amazing panelists. Thank you guys for spending some time with us, sharing your uh, thoughts, your stories, and your skills. Jeez, that's beautiful. Bravo. Thank you, Brian, Bobby. Thanks for inviting us, Bobby. Thank you so much. Thank you.